I'm reviewing two films on Netflix that you can watch right now, so let's get this started. Hey, I'm Dan Merle, and I'm here to review two movies that are currently available to watch on Netflix. They are both Netflix original movies as well. The first one is Extraction, which hit the service a couple weeks ago, and the other one is a teen comedy called The Half of It, which is available to watch right now. And let's start with Extraction, which is directed by a name that might be familiar if you like to read the credits of Marvel movies, which we sit through them anyway, so why not give them a read sometime? Uh, The director is Sam Hargrave, who has been the stunt coordinator slash fight choreographer for uh, all the MCU entries from the Russo brothers, also has worked on the stunts and fighting team for movies like Atomic Blonde, and has been a stunt double in a lot of movies. So uh, yet another feature director that comes from the stunt world uh, and that delivers what I found to be another really enjoyable action movie. This one stars Chris Hemsworth as Tyler Rake, which, by the way, what a great mercenary name, Tyler Rake, who, of course, is haunted by a tragic past, as all mercenaries must be. Tyler is hired to extract the young son of a Mumbai drug lord who is kidnapped by a rival drug lord and taken to Bangladesh. Now, the young kid's name is Ovi, and he's played by uh, what I found to be a really talented young actor named Rudraksh Jaiswal, and I apologize if I completely butchered that name. Ovi is a character that requires a strong performance, and I was really impressed by the performance in this movie. It helped ground the movie and, and keep it realistic because uh, you need a little realis- realism because a lot of this is very stylized action, uh, but not stylized in the Michael Bay sense, in the sense of like massive explosions and everything is big, uh, but a lot lot of really really good fight choreography and it's centered around this uh, 10 plus minute action centerpiece uh, almost right in the middle of the movie that is constructed to look like it's, it's not actually but it's constructed to look like it is one continuous shot and it's done really well and a lot of times in a movie like this when you have a sequence of this nature, it feels like a gimmick or it gets old after a while. This is not the case here. It's a lot of different kinds of action. You have car chases, you have fight scenes going through hallways, you go up and down buildings, and the camera you know, seemingly follows characters as they jump across buildings, uh, fall down onto the street. It's not just the fact that it's one shot. There's a lot of dynamism. There's a lot of dynamic action in this sequence, and I found it to be a really impressive feat. A lot of the individual elements in this film I thought were really strong the script by joe russo from the graphic novel see you dad really sets the dynamics up well between the characters because this could have just been the sort of tyler rake versus the world almost john wick scenario but he interweaves into the script this uh third party who you also have sympathies with who you also understand where they're coming from and so instead of a one-on-one battle throughout the whole film you have these sort of mini conflicts that pop up not just with this third party who's trying to interject into the situation and actually kicks off the entire action, uh, but also with another uh, person from Tyler's past, whom I won't give away because I didn't know this actor was in the movie, uh, and it's always fun to see them show up, but who brings in uh, another angle, and and even if you disagree with that character's actions, you can see where the root of that comes from, and I think that's another thing that keeps this movie fresh and from being just another standard action movie, or an action movie with great fight sequences but not much else to offer. The dynamic between conflicts between these characters is interesting it keeps you intrigued it keeps you wondering what's going to happen next and I think that's important to have on board in addition to great action the cinematography is by Newton Thomas Siegel and he brings a really kind of mid-90s Michael Bay vibe and that's not an insult I can see that influence in the film now one of the impressive things is that this movie was made for a reported budget of 65 million dollars and for a movie of that budget I think this is a really impressive effort this is a good looking movie movie. It doesn't skimp on locations. It doesn't skimp on the action. Obviously, you have a a, a top star with Chris Hemsworth uh, anchoring the film. So this does not look like a movie that was made for $65 million, except for in a couple of spots, particularly when we're talking about things like explosions and smoke effects. Even the highest budget films don't ne- haven't necessarily nailed how to make that look realistic. That's the one place where I feel Extraction shows some of its limitations is when you get to the visual effects, particularly on things like that. But in general, for it looks like a movie that was made at, at twice the budget, which is the mark of a great director and the mark of a great team that knows how to make things happen on a smaller scale. And of course, they leave things open for a potential sequel or spinoff 
should that be necessary, which according to a lot of reports, that kind of thing may be on the way. When that will take place, I don't know. There's a lot of story to be mined in both the past and the futures of a lot of characters in this film. I will say there's a character named Nick Khan, played by Golshifta Farahani, who gets a little bit of business to do at the end that looks really awesome. I think that she could be uh, great for a spinoff series if you want to go that way, or if there is a sequel to this film, whether it's set in the past or whether it goes forward from the events in this movie, I would love to see more of her character uh, because we we don't get to see much of her, but what little we do get to see, uh, I really enjoyed and would like to see an expanded role for her. So Extraction is a movie that I enjoyed. As a pure action film, I know I just gave a recommendation to Bad Boys for Life. As a pure action film, I love I like the action in this movie even better than I like the action in that movie. And I was a fan of the action in Bad Boys for Life. Uh, so in Bad Boys for Life and Extraction, I think you have two really solid action films in the marketplace right now. You can check either one of those out. Now, the second film I'm reviewing that you can watch on Netflix right now is a movie called The Half of It, which is from writer-director Alice Wu. This is her second feature film and her first one since 2004. The Half of It stars Leia Lewis as high school student Ellie Chu, who's recruited by a kind of a lunk-headed football player, but lovable, uh, Paul Munsky, to help woo uh, a girl named Aster Flores uh, with letters and messages on social media. This is a very modern love story. Uh, Aster is played by uh, Alexis Lemire, and this is a kind of a typical Cyrano de Bergerac teen comedy setup. If this was all there was to it, uh, this might have been entertaining, but sort of derivative of what you've seen before. But the difference in this one and what gives this movie a lot of its freshness is that Ellie uh, has a crush on Aster, not Paul. A lot of times you would see this as, you know, Ellie and Paul are working together to woo this girl, but then uh, Paul realizes that he likes Ellie instead. Uh, We've seen this set up and pay off many times before. Here we have a character in Ellie who actually has a crush on the girl that she is trying to help Paul get. Are those feelings mutual? What could become of that sort of relationship? This is set in a very small town. Uh, The dynamics of that come into play. That's where the uniqueness and the freshness of this movie comes in. Uh, It adds a wrinkle into the teen movie formula. I think it freshens it up a bit. Uh, And Leia Lewis's performance particularly really puts this movie on solid ground. You feel the conflict in this character. Uh, She gives her a very lived-in quality. She doesn't you don't necessarily have to to tell us everything about her. A lot of it is spoken through her performance. She is uh, not only uh, coming into her own as far as uh, her sexual identity and who she loves, but also her cultural identity. That plays into the movie as well. She is part of a family. Her, she and her father came from China. There's been a struggle with with identifying with the culture, with being an outsider. All of these things come into play. I will say that the movie does feel a bit overstuffed because there are a lot of issues that are talked about in this film and not all of them are addressed necessarily uh, to the extent of others. There's a subplot with Ellie's father uh, who is uh, 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 has a PhD but who never really was allowed to succeed in the United States because of a language barrier, because of a cultural barrier. These are really interesting aspects to both of their characters uh, and they go into it a little bit but because there's so much other stuff going on, I feel like it sort of gets short shrift. I would have liked to have seen maybe weed out some of the other things, make more room for that, or as great as it is to touch on these aspects, if you're not able to address them 100%, maybe revisit the story and see how you can balance things out a little bit better. Something I really liked about the movie is that it avoids this really all too easy instinct to make a definitive conclusion about its characters. There are a couple of the romances that again, in a more generic comedy, would wrap up the movie saying like, these two definitely end up together or these two definitely don't end up together. They go for a more realistic outlook, especially when you're talking about teenagers who are 17, 18, 19 years old who haven't made definitive choices about their lives and what's going to go on for the rest of their lives. That is addressed head on, and it's addressed in a really a realistic and an honest way. There doesn't seem to be a lot of manufactured conflict as far as that goes. And again, that realism is what breaks through a lot of the more conventional teen comedies, high school romance type stuff, and gives this movie, like I said earlier, a very fresh feel. Now, I mentioned it does have a couple too many subplots. I think you could have worked around those a little bit better. Perhaps even if you make the movie five, ten minutes longer, 
you could have integrated that into the story better. I also think that there are a couple of places where it feels very stagey. There's particularly a third act scene where all of the characters come together and and sort of the putting your cards out on the table scene, but it's all locked into this one location. It does feel a little false, a little artificial, which stands out again because so much of this movie does feel real and genuine. Overall, though, I think the half of it is a step above your average teen comedy. Uh, I, the performances, generally, very solid all around. Well-written characters, characters that you feel for. Uh, you, I, d- I did not find the ending uh, to be uh, overly trite or overly hokey. I think it left the characters right where it's natural to leave these characters. And it doesn't. it's not concerned with easy answers, necessarily. It is more concerned with realism. So I think that Alice Wu really has... Has, uh, written and directed a teen comedy that is relatable, that doesn't feel outdated, that doesn't feel trite or overdone, uh, and really, you know, other than a few things that, that that held it back just a little bit, maybe that was budgetary restraint, maybe that was just the, that the script needed to go through a couple more revisions. Uh, the half of it is another film on Netflix that I think uh, is worth your time and that I'd recommend. So those are my thoughts on two films that you can watch right now on Netflix. Have you seen one or both of them? What did you think? Let me know down below. And thank you so much for watching. It's been so much fun these last couple weeks as we build this channel together. You can check out my reviews of some other 2020 movies that are available right now. I just did one this week for Doolittle. I did one last week for Bad Boys for Life and Sonic the Hedgehog. If you're looking for movies to watch other than these, check out my reviews of those as well. And don't forget that you can find all of this and more over over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Dan Merle. Uh, I put early access to reviews like this on there, as well as my monthly movie club, uh, a monthly feature commentary, lots of fun stuff that you can find over there. Uh, Check that out if you want even more of this fun stuff. Uh, But if you're just here, uh, thank you so much for that as well. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff that helps the almighty algorithm. Uh, We are all at the mercy of it. So thank you so much for everything that you do uh, to support what I'm doing here. I really, really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.